Uh, uh, welcome everybody to the, um, uh, the first full council meeting of 2024. Uh, you all may have seen me in a very jovial mood, which I am pleased to see it, you know, again, for students <laughs> uh, after the finish long weather. Uh, right, there are no members of the public present, so, so we shall move straight on to recording the public meeting. Um, the meeting is being recorded on the Parish Council's uh, YouTube channel. Does anybody wish to make any further further recording? Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Item 116, um, items to be heard in private session. Um, we are proposing that item 125, which is community champions, be held in private session uh, because it may include the discussion of individual individual members of the public. Um, are people happy to accept that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Apologies and requests <coughs> for absence. So these have been sent out all already. So, so you, you, you've got those to consider, and also just to let you know that uh, Councillor Greaves is bringing those. So just Councillor Bellamy. Okay. Thank you. Are we um, happy to just to accept the reasons for? Um, item 118, receipt, receipt of written declarations for pecuniary and other interests. So there have been no further declarations um, from councillors. I shared my declaration uh, with all of you by email separate for the papers and also printed all copies for uh, councillors who receive um, printed copies of papers. So there's just up to no one can receive. So now you know it's in writing about my cousin <coughs> being on the garage facing. Oh, I thought you were going to tell us that you were like a member of a political party or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
So we are still hoping we'll get just trees in by the end of this planting season. Uh, the, the other site is at Tongley Library, and we've had um, excellent cooperation, obviously, from the friends of Tongley Library. And I think we've extended, decided to extend the site, which is not just um, the bits which is next to Thurston Road, but also uh, the kind of fairly narrow strip down um, close to Victoria Place. Well, I think we're going to put the fruit trees because there's more, there's more light there. Um, and we're actively considering what we put on the other, the other part. Um, Jason Brook had a meeting last Friday with um, John Ford, uh, who has got some ideas about a, a, stone, a stone seat. Um, but I think I haven't made the point quite cogently. I think that we cannot really go over budget on this. Um, on this. So whether we'll manage to, to uh, um, get a stone seat within the budget, um, I, I, I don't know, I suspect not. Um, and um, we're pursuing the fruit trees Council allows us to be actively, very actively pursuing the fruit trees from the other home connections. So we are making progress, but it just seems somewhat slow. Okay, um, moving on to uh, minute uh, 2324103, the civic, Cocoa Civic Hall and the valuation. So, uh, so the, the valuation has been completed up, reported that in the last full council meeting. We've not yet received the report back from the valuation, so I'll chase that up tomorrow. And then regarding the rights relating to the civic, a number of residents on High Town Lane with properties adjacent to the back of the civic have been written to setting out the council's position regarding rights of way. And they've been offered a meeting with myself in, in Dawn uh, if they've got any queries or any comments they want to make about that. One resident has requested a meeting and that's scheduled to take place this Thursday. Uh, so the issues are on their way to being resolved. Thank you. Well, right, so we have to consider any further actions arriving from minutes apart from those that we've, we've, we've already been outlined. I'm happy to accept those reports. Thank you. Right, moving on to committee minutes under delegated powers. The first uh, the minutes of standing committee meetings on the first one is Finance and Management Committee held on the 8th of January. So, is that Councillor Colling? Um, can I move that we approve or note or whatever it is we do? Approve the minutes of this meeting <laughs> held on that day. All in favour of approving the minutes, thank you. Right. Um, draft minutes of the Planning Committee held on the 15th of January, 2024. Oh, they're following due course. They, they will go out with the agenda for the planning meeting. I guess that should be in the minutes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 There are a lot of notes in that meeting. Well, we're not. <laughs> right. right. Moving on to financial matters, I can move on to the two, and Deputy Clark has strengthened the call on financial matters. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's pretty much laid out as it is there. Um, you remember when the when the budget was approved on the 18th of December, it was kind of a pro pro provisional preset because it was based on uh, last year's tax base figure of 10482.86. Um, since then, Kirkley sent us their draft uh, figure for the for the tax base for 2024-25, which is 10741.38. And it has been, we, we received an email today which has finalised that, so it's no longer a draft figure, that's, that's the finalised figure of Kirkley's. So given the, uh, given the Band D household charge that was set of £30.53, if you multiply by that by the new tax base figure, you get the preset figure of £327,934. Uh, £327, uh, and as you see, um, New councillors may not be aware that we also get this special expenses grant, which is basically given because the parish council, uh, the parish council provides certain things which are normally provided by Kirk Lees. So, for that reason, um, some money was was paid to the parish council to offset that essentially, and that worked out at thirty two pence per the tax base figure. So that resolves into three thousand four hundred thirty seven pounds. Um, so the, the total amounts that we will be um, requesting from Kirk Lees 
will be freeing 31,371 pounds. Um, we'll be asking for it in two parts, uh, as we have previously, um, and uh, we have to basically send a, a formal letter to, to Kirk Lees uh, once this meeting is uh, finalised, uh, ahead of their meeting on the 6th of March. So um, I'd like you to approve those figures, please. Right, so first there were three things to approve. First of all, question. Before we move on to the work, I just want to say that um, the, all the, the detail is admirably set out, very clearly set out mm -hmm. in, in document in document three. So to thank uh, the RFO for his uh, for, for his attempts to try and help us understand the complexity <laughs> the complexities of this, which. I don't know if you can try any harder it. So, uh, so moving moving to approve. So first of all, uh, we need to approve uh, the preset uh, of three two seven nine three four. All those in favour of approving the preset? Thank you. Uh, and we need to approve the special expenses grant of three thousand four hundred and thirty seven. So all those in favour of that? Right. And then the sum, which is the total. Uh, from Kirk Lees, I mean, one thing I was thinking about, it wasn't specifically to do with that, I mean, it was set at 32p, but again, as we're aware, money, you know, the price of stuff has gone up. Mm -hmm. It's set us at 32 pence forever, essentially. Well, this is, is it. Is that correct? Is well, that a reasonable thing? Well, they've got my housing tax up with rate of inflation. I just wondered if we could ask for the special grant to show up with a rate of inflation. I, I, will, I, will, I will query them about what it's for, and I will, I will, ask, them about, I will ask them that point. Yeah. Just ask them. No, I think it's a fair point. Thank you, Councillor Um I just wanted to say, Rich and I, with Jen, are looking to find a way to see if we can avoid having two budget meetings and two preset meetings, you know, one, two, two for FM and two for full council, and we're going to see if we can um, avoid that. We don't know whether we can. We are looking at it. Good. That's true. That's uh, welcome news to uh, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Collins. Right, is there any any <coughs> any more comments and questions um, on the budget before we move on to the next item? Um, so it's uh, RFO to report again. So it's the um, uh, the Home Valley Council interim audit. Um, yeah, so uh, Safia came out um, a few weeks ago. I think you can see it's quite a, a thorough report that she's done. I, mean, I, think, I think she's a really good internal auditor. She's very, you know, I was just saying to Jen, I mean, she gives us a lot of advice and she does find fault in what we do, but she does, she's not snarky about it. She's very helpful and trying to, to help the council to be better at what it's doing. I don't think any of the things that have come up have been particularly large or, or will take a particularly long time to do. Um, I'm going to ignore doing some, you know, the ones about banking. I'm just going to leave it until the Unity Trust account is set up because there's not a lot of point setting up plans now to do stuff um, when the Unity Trust can solve those problems in the first place. There's a slight issue with the insurance, as I'm sure you're aware. I mean, she's asked us to, um, to look at alternatives for the insurance, but obviously we've got a roof that's not being repaired. I don't think many insurers would take us with a, with a roof in the state it's in. Also, given that we've got an ongoing um, concern with one of the neighbours with regard to the flood, um, our current insurance broker is, has been very supportive of that. So, although I might look into other, other insurers, I'm, I'm a little bit disinclined to be too too assertive in trying to find a cheaper product, if you know what I mean. Might leave it until the next year when we're a bit more sorted with the roof. 
from the water coming into the into the main hall. Uh, and then a few of the other things, as you can see, are, are things which he wants us to do extra bits, like as you can see with regard to the a schedule of payment, she's asked me to get the, the chair of this meeting or finance to initial initial that document when it happens rather than we've not done that before. And things like the bank reconciliations, those have got to go to finance and have got to be signed rather than at the moment it's just gone through the agenda and you know kind of noted but she wants it to be actively signed by the chair. But as I say, none of it's particularly onerous, it's just, you know, fairly bitty kind of stuff. Thank you. It's interesting how the recommendations have changed over time, really. Mm. They used to be far, far more weighty, I would say, and I guess auditors like inspectors um, asked to do a job with always buying something to, to comment <coughs> on. So, um, congratulations to, to, to Rich for his, well, it's a good report, so thank you. Anybody, anybody, any comments on the internal audit? Could I just make one point? I don't know whether this is, this is the point to make it, but I've just noticed the unity trust. I just wanted to make the point, I mean, I, um, you, I, I've spoken to some councillors getting birth dates and addresses and stuff in the last few weeks. Um, so I got through all of the application process and it got to the end and it said, we've got to supply a business plan, which obviously we haven't got. So... Um, we're going to need to do something with that, and I think I'll, t I'll take it to the next next meeting of finance. Hopefully we can get it sorted before the next meeting of council, and hopefully we'll have the Unity Trust join before the end of this financial year. But it's, it's just another, another stumbling, <coughs> sort of stumbling point in our progress. Why do we need a business plan? This is, this is what they're asked for. Well, not really. Not Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> probably, probably a task better done by a working group, I think. 
Um, okay, so the yeah, anchor would be wanting to speak. Uh, Councillor Roster and then Councillor James. I'm just thinking about the next step in the sense that to most of 20 nominations, maybe some people who know have been nominated mm -hmm. and just have the council proposals to communicate with them the decision. Because if it's a private session, possibly, we, we said some we could not make a decision because we were overwhelmed by the number of, the number of nominations and we needed to go back and determine some criteria. I assume something where we, something, I, I assume people have nominated that were, were probably, some of you, some of some have probably spoken to them and some have probably not. Mm. Um, but I, I assume that, that you need to go, the, the public nominations are a different issue, aren't they? Because obviously the, 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 the uh, whoever's done, made the nomination, the public nomination is then, I assume the part will have to then inform the, 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 this decision to be further. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of nominations by councillors, I, I, I assume the best way is for anybody who has told someone they've nominated them to go back to them and explain the situation. I, I, are you happy to do that? Thank you. Well, James, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, James. I just wanted to, to, to clarify that the case will be looking at process as well as criteria because I think the discussion this evening has illustrated that the process by which yes. process, 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 protocols, criteria. I think. Yeah. Thank you. Um, criteria and process. Yes. Criteria and process. <laughs> so can you keep? Right. That was some. That was always going to be a difficult, a difficult item. And um, thank, thank you. Um, we do. We do attempt to um, operate in a spirit of um, openness and transparency and, 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 gen and generosity. Um, so it was. It was a difficult. It, it was a difficult item. So. Um, thank you for um, showing us through the year. You've come at quite the wrong time. So unless anybody's got any last contributions, I think that's the end of our annual to I'm just saying, well, the yes. important I think it is that we do celebrate how many different people do contribute to the work of the council mm -hmm. and to the community at large. And I'm saddened that in fact we can't publicly say thank you to so many people because I thought it was wonderful that there were so many very different nominations from so many different groups of people and it's definitely something to celebrate. So I hope we're not, we don't delay it too long before we really can say thank you and celebrate. <coughs> contributions. Well said. Thank you, Councillor Bell. That's a really good point, notes on which to uh, move mm -hmm. away from this item. So thank you. Right. So um, item item one to six is the annual report. Um, do you wish to speak to this? Um, it's, it's, it says it all in the narrative, really. And tomorrow I'll email the chairs of, of committees. So the annual report is um, a requirement for the annual govern governance and audit return. Uh, I've included an example in, in papers for you. And it should be um, presented at the annual parish meeting. Now, that hasn't happened very robustly over the last couple of years. We're trying to get to that position where that annual parish meeting sort of marks the end of the year and is therefore a chance for you as a council to report to the public okay, on, on, on what's happened over the year. So I will be emailing out to committee chairs, the council chair, uh, tomorrow regarding this. So it needs to be a, a report in words of about 300 words. You can go to the assistant clerk or call myself. And if we could have that in, please, by the 20, uh, 3, 3 p.m. and 29th of February. Next Homework. It is homework. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to market. <laughs> but, but can 
that we we, uh, that we note the deadlines and and encourage chairs to get their pub reports in in good time so that the parking team are not having to chase people for their reports which may have happened in the past yes. but by all means you know ring us and let us know if there's any information yeah. that you need us to provide you with that will help you do the report Let's move on to item 127. I think this is a oh, this is a real a real cause for celebration. This is. I, I hope everybody's seen this really great production on the desk in front of you there. Um, so um, the parish council flyer. Um, obviously, the assistant clerk is not able to be here. Do you wish to speak to this or on this in the chair? Yeah. to speak. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you very much indeed. Um, I've, I've, I sent out, as you all know, a, a, an email to everybody who are on, both on case committee and, and council uh, in full, so that I hope everybody would be reminded really of why we were doing this and what our hopes were in terms of this being the first, perhaps, if it's well received, uh, piece of physical literature to the community because we're well aware as I'm, I'm sure everybody is well aware that not everybody is social media social media for very good reasons i think sometimes um, and it's really nice to have something that is concrete that gives a an overview of what we're about and that, i think that's a real testament to the four people who were involved you know volunteered to do this work and Putting stuff together like this, as I'm sure anybody who's ever done it knows, is no easy task. So thank you very much indeed uh, to those case members, Martin and Jenny and Trisha and Alison for doing that. And thank you very much Mary for coming in at the end and putting her eagle eye over it and also in absentia to Gemma uh, for her guidance and support really. Um, and my role in it was absolutely minimal, um, except for the, the printer really, as much as anything. So what we would like, um, and that's why you've got a pack, as I said in my email, you know your wards, you know where the places are where these can be distributed and used. There's no expectation that anybody's going to go around shoving them through letterboxes. Unless, of course, that's what you want to do. But yours to do with as you see fit in order to help people in your particular community know all about what we do. We would like some feedback, because if this is going to be the first in a series of physical communications, then it's good to know whether it's been worthwhile. You know, because it, although it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't particularly expensive to produce this, it's like 250 quid or something. Um, but nevertheless, those things add up. <clears throat> so we would like feedback. Um, and yeah, when it comes to the next one, if there is a next one, um, then we would be more than happy to have other voices involved in the putting together of the content. Because it is a Home Valley Parish Council production, it's not a case production or the people who did it production. So I, I think. I think that's all I want to say. Oh, no, one more thing. Um, because Kath and, uh, and Donald, who are both the, the Fulston people, are not here at the moment, we would really like some help in that area, if that's possible. Yeah. Thank you very much, yeah. uh, Tom. Councillor Brooke, were you offering help? Or yeah. Wishing to speak, offering help. Great. Yeah. Right. There two people, I think there are two people who are waiting to speak. One is Councillor James, and the other one is Councillor Riley. Yes? Okay. Chair, I, I, I raise this with an enormous trepidation, particularly since your eagle eye was cast down. Oh, you found you found it over here. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm not local, I'm just curious about the spelling of Laura Batty. I think there should be an e on the end, <laughs> as I understand the local spelling of the name. <laughs> Anyone, am I right? Or am I not? I'd just like to say, it's, 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 it's
quiet place, let the council down to It's okay. a really lovely piece of work, isn't it? You know, like your colour ways and the way you've done it and the little code at the bottom and the information's short, sharp, precise. It's really good, well done. I like it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Riles. Right. Can I just, can I, can I just ask, is it available in any other formats? Um, no, not at the moment. <laughs> you could have no reason why. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there's no reason why it can't be made available as a as a PDF or and put on to people's Facebook page. I, I suspect when I've had a chance to talk to Gemma that we'll be able to put it as an attachment or a piece on the parish council website. some time ago was having a brief interview with a parish councillor, an interesting brief interview with a parish councillor, <laughs> you, you know, form an orderly queue at the door, because we're an interesting bunch it seems to me, we're a very mixed bunch, and I think that would be a lovely thing so to do. So you're volunteering to do so? No, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm volunteering to write it, you understand, and then I don't have to be in it. <laughs> Can you or what? Yeah, we've done a newsletter like before. We used, yeah. to do, we used to do the newsletter, we got posted out to everybody, yeah. but that, that costs a lot of money. Kids are posting out everywhere, and we don't, we don't really want to do that no. now. Um, wait, does this overlap with uh, the tea tour that we do, or is that going to stop happening? I would prefer not to comment on tea tour, if you don't mind. It's a part of it, there's nothing in there. Eight thousand times, and it's so bland you haven't noticed. You've thrown them away because I'm being called to me. Well, you're missing. Well, I am nothing that you can. Well, I'm very. I am extremely pleased that this item seems to cheer you all up enormously. <laughs> 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 Uh, does anybody else wish to speak on the, on the flyer before we move on to the meeting schedule? I just want to say congratulations to the group. I think it's um, much better than, than anything that's been produced for, for a very long time. Yeah. And I agree with Councillor Wine. I think the colours are, you know, it's, it, it looks good. Mm. Uh, okay, Councillor White Lord? Just to say that if you get feedback, then will you direct it to me yeah. and then I can collate things? Thank you. Right, let's move along to item 108, which is the meeting schedule, which is a, <laughs> a rapidly changing scene, I think, isn't it? So I'll start to report further. Yeah, yes, uh, apologies for various versions of this. What we're trying to do is get to a point where the schedule, once it is agreed, will stay and doesn't have to be um, changed and met with throughout the year kind of thing. So that's that's why you've had different versions sent out and you've got version four in front of you now. I'm going to go through this to explain why we've made some of, some of the decisions that we have. It is, you know, until you've approved it, it is just a draft agenda. So first of all, if you look at that um, 8th of April, 
We've tried to restore the principle that the first Monday after a long holiday should have no meeting so that it's time to prepare agendas, time for you also as councillors. So that happens also after the late summer bank holiday and also after the Christmas New Year break. Now planning one was down for this date in the 2023-24 schedule. That will now take place on the 22nd of April. So please do adjust your diaries. If this schedule, number four, is agreed tonight, all previous dates on the website and so forth will be changed and I will send out the approved schedule to you by email as well as you having that copy tonight. Um, and then on the 2023-24 meeting schedule, the meeting on 15th of April, that was down as the first staffing meeting of 24-25. That's now changed to the 29th of April. On the 23-24 uh, meeting schedule, if you look at the planning committee one, that, that's down on the old schedule is the first finance and management meeting. That's now changed to the 15th of April. So again, it's just a plea to make sure that you do adjust your diaries as well. It gets a little bit more sim simple after, after those ones. So number four, um, the 29th of April was marked as free on version three. It's now got staffing one in it. And the fact that it's followed by a bank holiday Monday with no meeting, that gives adequate time for the preparation for the annual council meeting. So there is, there is really more or less of them free for that. Number five, the annual council meeting, uh, that there's no change there on the 13th of May from the original schedule. The same goes for the planning committee meeting uh, down for the 20th of May. So it does start to get a bit more, um, a bit more man manageable after this, this point. We have the issue of the fact that we can't use the Civic while the uh, Home for Bart Week is on. So I've tried to indicate already those meetings which are going to take place in Honley Library. And the Finance and Management Committee meeting that's down for the 19th of August. We're having, one of the reasons why that meeting is down is so that there's a chance to make payments and so forth over that long summer break. Rich, is that still needed, do we feel? Yeah, well, definitely, I mean, it's, yeah. you know, there's nearly two months between the council meeting on the 24th of June and the finance on the 19th of August, so yeah. it's, it's a, it is a big gap with no possibility of authorising payments. So. Yeah, so I'm, gonna, I'm going to move on to the September meetings now. And these have all been scheduled around the fact that uh, grants are looked at in the service provision and finance and management meeting. And also they've been scheduled a little bit around the annual leave that we're taking as well, because obviously if we're on holiday, we can't get ag agendas out and um, minute meetings. So there's very little flexibility over um, how those meetings are scheduled in September. I've talked to Gemma about the fact that you've got a case meeting followed immediately by a planning meeting. Because we do try to avoid people having to clerk two meetings on the bounce. But Gemma's aware of that and it's partly so that it sort of fits around leave and, and so forth. Uh, so that's that one. And then there is a change in that case committee meeting as well. Okay, so I've swapped over the case in the planning committee meeting so that Gemma can follow up the planning meeting more easily. If the planning one follows the case, well, it makes it easier for Gemma because there's lots of things she has to do the day after the planning meeting to get the information out. So that's, that's why that's changed. And then there are there is also... <coughs> <coughs> 
for some further changes to the case meetings from version 3 that's worth having a look at as well. Okay, and then Rich was referring earlier to the fact that we've tried to put on the 2nd of December approving the budget and uh, the draft free separately on that finance and management committee meeting. So there is no finance and management meeting in the January. So that's a change to how we've done things in the past to try to streamline it and make it a little bit more manageable really. So I hope that makes sense to everyone. There is a possibility to have an additional case meeting on the 27th of January. Now case um, is like, like the service provision meeting, generally scheduled to have four meetings in a year. But I know that some of our agendas have been extremely long and of course case was the result of an amalgamation of two committees. So there is a possibility that there could be an extra meeting on the 27th of January. I've talked to uh, Gemma about that, I've heard from Gemma regarding that, because obviously it's an extra meeting for her, but she's fully supportive of that idea. I don't know if you want to say anything about that, Gemma. Not at the moment, thank you. Would you, <laughs> would you, would you like to have that extra meeting? I think the answer is yes. <laughs> Twenty seventh of January. Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just checking the dates. <laughs> <laughs> just remind me, we'll be back in four weeks. Second year. It was only a bit of a It's fine. I mean, for, for, for my money, you can you can put in an additional one on the twenty seventh of January. Right. That might help spread things out a bit, really. Yes. Yeah. So so that that will be in version five that will follow and be emailed out to everyone and posted out if necessary as well tomorrow. Okay. So I think that that's all I can say about it really. I think that's all you want to take in about it as well. Yes, yes. Does it does it matter that there isn't a full council meeting in quarter three and that the space, if you like, to 24th of June, and then the next one is the 14th of October. Yeah, it's a huge, it's, it's, it's a huge, and if you remember, that October meeting is absolutely crammed full of committee meetings and so forth, mm. but it, it, it needs to follow the um, service provision in the finance and management meetings that happen in September in terms of looking at the grants. <laughs> so even though it's within the remit of service provision and finance and management to approve their grants. The schedule of payment then has to go to full council. It's only after that full council meeting, when the minutes have been approved and so forth, that the grants get paid out. So that's why that happens in that way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We are not saying we are So it feel it would feel more logical to have a full council meeting in September, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But the full council meeting that happens needs to be able to say, yeah, you know, you've now got the freedom to pay out these grants. I get that. Thank you. Thanks for the exposition, oh. guys. Thank you. Might be able to version six, seven, but we'll see. Yeah, version five, and hopefully that will be it. Right, can we can we please approve? Um, are we approving version four or version five? Version five. Yeah. Version five. Yeah. Yeah. It will be with the freedom amendment. All in favour, thanks. on from the uh, recommendation approved on the 18th of December at Council to the Turkey's monitoring officer to secure all council
Council claiming regarding declaration of these threats and the convert, and that that should take place. This is from the um, first week monitoring officer. What she was concerned about was attendance, and therefore her recommendation was right. So make sure the training happens either prior to or during the full council meeting. You'll have seen from the feedback from YRTA that they are recommending a training session of around two and a half hours that should be separate from the meeting. And as you can imagine, trying to tag on two and a half hours of training to a meeting clearly isn't creditable, that's just too long. So the possible dates on the calendar, if that training is to be on a Monday, would be either the 8th of April, 1st of July, 2nd of September, or the 18th of November, looking through the rest of this year. And I would suggest the training would be scheduled from 6.30 to, to, to 9. You'll have also seen on the uh, response from, from YLTA that there's a potential cost here. So the cost of £32 per councillor would be £736, presumably you want officers to attend as well, which is a further £96. So the cost from the YLTA would be £832, plus the <coughs> travel expenses. So this would probably need a budget of around £900. Um, would be possible to look for another provider? I doubt really that the uh, cost would be very much different from that. Mm -hmm. So what I'm looking for in terms of further actions is whether we can agree some dates for me to take back to YLTA and also agree the funding for this training. Mm. Mm. Okay. Well, I was just, just going to ask about the co is everyone's negotiation with them because I, I don't understand why they're costing it per person and it's group counselling for the training officer. I can ask. I wonder if they could do it by a team. Then there's no expenditure cost and he's green. That, that, I can certainly raise that with YLTA. I think one of the benefits of, or one of the, one of the observations you made on the 18th of December was everyone hearing the same thing and having the same experience of the training. Sometimes that's better if you're all together in a room, but you know, it, it, it's for you as a council to decide what you want. But I can ask. A lot of conferences have trained you for the training cost. You said it was really good and it was teams one. No, it wasn't good. It was, it was face to face. Oh, was it? Um, I would imagine that it'd be quite, it would be a lot more useful if we were all here together and we could have, I would imagine that you'd have discussions out, that you have to yeah. just be mm -hmm. talked to. So two and a half hours. So I don't, I don't think, um, yeah, I don't think teams or Zoom would be a good way forward. I think, I think as a group, I think you need everybody to, everybody who can attend to attend and have some discussions. I'm making the assumption that this isn't something that would happen every year. So, um, although it's you know quite a sizable chunk of money, it's not exactly a one-off, but not far off. Um, have you tried um, purchasing paper for these ballots? Because it's not something that they're not also be able to falsify like the monitoring officers or the their team. And the other thing that I mentioned as well is if you do it through uh, teams or different formats like that, we'll have some training crew work. And what they can do is at certain points is they make you into breakout areas and people can do discussion with teams through that. So if you can do that, and it, it, it is quite good. So you could possibly do that, but I don't, I don't totally understand what you mean. Yeah. Can, can we um, perhaps agree, agree on the date? I mean, it seems to me that. that um, if, if for the 8th of 1st of July are the kind of front runners, because if we wait until 2nd of September, 25th of November, they, 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 this um, council is on half over, as it were. What, what was those dates? Um, 8th of April and the 1st of July. So, so those are 
updates before full council meeting, I think, or, or that they are one of those rare Mondays when you don't have a meeting scheduled. <coughs> so, sorry. So, so can so um, can I ask you to indicate whether uh, you think it'd be a good thing for Jim <coughs> to suggest either the eighth of April or the first of July to, to uh, YLCA and people? Okay with that. Yeah, those are the two early. Those are the two earlier dates. Thank you. Um, and may, maybe um, the clerk can explore whether there's a huge um, financial advantage in, in using Teams or something. I mean, my, my feeling is, given the nature of, uh, of, of given the nature of what we're going to explore, I, I think there would be a lot to be going for actually being together in the same room, but not this room. So probably and it's cheaper. Um, and I mean, and these are uh, these are issues. The declaration of interest and the code of conduct, I think, which are which I think we're all we're all struggling with a bit. So, so I think it's important that this that this happens and happens as soon as it can. Okay. Is there any more? Or do we need then to discuss the budget, don't we? Just yes. Yes. So approved to spend up to nine hundred. So are, are you are you wanting a motion that you, you do want to go with the YLCA framework? Because you want because there've been other other suggestions about voting churches and so forth. So her please do do that framework. Donna said she's done it, hasn't she? You know when she joined as a new councillor. That was induction that, training. Yeah, though. but it didn't cover declaration oh, of interest right. because she said she didn't feel like she needed to do it again. I wonder if <coughs> as an internal cost maybe it might be cheaper and a bit more flexible. Charge about the same thing for external external organisations, which which we are. So I was going to propose that we approve spending up to the nine hundred, yes, yes, but yeah. let the clerk ask her please in case yeah. there is a saving yeah. to be made. I'll second that. Yeah. So so we've agreed agree on two possible dates. So can we agree on the first and second to spend up to nine hundred? Okay. Are those in favour? Up to from where? Up to from where? Yeah, yeah, but you haven't, you, haven't got, you, haven't got, you haven't got that amount, that amount of money. Here's a clue, how much is it? Well, we might have some in the chairman's expenses now. Which, um, oh, but you can, I mean, there's money, there's money in, there's obviously money in general reserves. Yeah. You, just need to, you just need to say general reserves. Can we ask you to recommend it the next? Yeah. No, I, 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 just give me a second, I'll be, I'll be able to get it up. Just give me a second. Oh, you are good, Richard. <laughs> magic money tree. Right, so, so council training at, at the start of the year, you've got nine hundred pounds. You've used uh, three hundred ninety-seven, so you've got five hundred and two pounds and ten pence left. If it goes into town, it's realised next year. Well, can I ask? Can I recommend that you come to the next F and A with the recommendations where we find the balance? Just, just, just take it from general reserve. Just take can we build on that? Yeah. We can build on that. So you can put it down with us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Right, so, um, clerk's report further, item 1, 3, are a protocol for dealing with residents' queries. And we've had, we've had Jen's, um, Jen's document, and I'm going to go on and she's already finished. Yeah, so I've, I've not got a lot further to add than what I've put in the report itself. I really don't want to suggest any kind of recording performer for councillors to use. I think, I think that would be counterproductive. And I'm hoping that you might find the workbook from the uh, local government association 
it is thought in terms of reviewing how you work with you know, people that approach you with issues and so forth. So I suppose one of the options you, you can consider is whether you want to just note this report or whether you want to take the checklist forward as a protocol that you, you all um, follow from, the, from, from now on. I would suggest you might just want to note the report, but uh, I hope it gives some guidance to those people who might want it about responding to queries from the public. Thank you for your work on this. Mm. <laughs> Underline, thank you. Um, the, the, um, so a suggestion from the clerk is that we, we at this point, we note this. We just note this. I, I, does anybody wish to suggest anything else at this point? There, there may be, we may return to this at some point, but at this point, we just begin. So, is there any, any words? Oh, sorry, did you just speak? It's just a question uh, about being aware of data protection issues. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be a cause for concern in the level of five, if I get it wrong. Uh, and liability, and I'm just assuming that's being careful with email. You know, in the work we do, just being careful with email addresses and things like that. Yeah. Nothing yeah. Not, not passing, not passing individuals' details on without getting their permission to do so. Yeah. Being yeah. careful about yeah. just forwarding an email. Yeah. 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 You can email, just email yeah. Right. Can we just can we just I suppose somebody's going to note it? Can all in all those in yeah. favour just <coughs> noting this? Thank you. Right, item one three one is a, an opportunity for um, the, those um, council, those Cape Police councillors for, for the area um, to to, um, to share to share issues with us. Um, and before I ask Councillor Green to talk about his suggestion, <coughs> is there anything from the, from any of the no no the, 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 the agenda and papers yeah. have, have been so, shared with other Cape Police and all the Cape Police board councillors. Some Hang Valley South and Hang Valley North, but I've not had any, any feedback other than from Councillor Greaves. Thank you, Councillor Greaves. I gather you wish to address the meeting, so the floor is yours. Yeah, if, if you start right, there's, there's three things I'll, I'll, I'll cover on quick though. So, the first one is there's actually quite, quite a lot of changes coming through on the bus timetables. There's some strange route changes, but, but the first bus have said they're going to rejig the timetables and, and might only be by 20 minutes, but obviously I can defend which way that 20 minutes are. Um, but it, 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 they haven't really publicised it, and as somebody got in touch with me today to say they've asked them for the new timetables, and First Post haven't been able to confirm it, First Post suggested they contact me so I can tell them when the bus is out. <laughs> which was an interesting... The other one is, is the, um, about the parking charges, so just to clarify, um, where parking charges are already in force, Kirklees don't need to go through a public consultation to change them, it can just go through a notification process. So that's where it's done for Huddersfield, Dewsbury and Home Firth. So those charges come into effect uh, again from the middle of February. So those are happening. Um, the, the, the bit that they are going to consult on is the introduction of parking charges in all the other car parks. So um, for, for within Home Valley, that would be the new mill car park by the toilets and, and the clay area. It would be um, the two car parks in Honley. It would be the Sands car park. And I, I think that's it. I, I, can't, I can't remember any others. Um, but the, the, the consultation of that hasn't started yet. And it won't start until they announce um, what the policy proposal is formally going to be. Um, which we're expecting imminently. So uh, there will be public consultation on that. Um, I, I have no idea if it's going to offer options. The original proposal offered no options, so it's a bit strange as to why I sort of like saying we'll need to do that. But we'll see what comes. 
And then the third one's around, around grit bins. So the council's changed its policy to uh, being that unless there is exceptional circumstances, grit bins are only going to be filled um, once, once a year, effectively. Now, um, what, what they've gone, then gone on to say is that they will not fund additional refills outside of that policy, but um, <coughs> if third parties or ward budgets want to do that, then they would consider it, and that, that can, uh, whilst it doesn't have to be all of the grip bins in an area, um, it would need to be worthwhile, you know, so rather than going out to do one. And they've given a price for that at uh, 135 pounds grip bin. So, um, having, having topped some of the grip bins up myself, it's a bit of a strange one. Some of them were barely touched, some of them were empty. Some of them, as you might guess, were empty for really good reasons, and some of them were empty for really poor reasons. Um, so the, the, there is that there is that off offer, that opportunity from from Kirklees, um, if if the parish wants to take it. I think um, um, I, I understand that I, I understand that some of the other towns and parishes have been talking about a range of issues. I'm not sure whether we are we're involved in that, but. If we are, it would probably be a good one to, to put on the table, all those kind of things. Because whilst Kirklees might offer the opportunity to towns and parishes, only um, I think you know, one, two, three, only four of the twenty-three uh, sorry, only five of the twenty-three wards are effectively covered by towns and parishes. So that leaves either you're back into that world of either our residents paying twice or residents in 18 wards not not having some big gap because the towns and parishes are filling it but that's always been the uh, the issue for the uh, for towns and parishes but i think um well is it, I'm, I'm relaying the message um but i i, I would I, I would think that it'd be if, if we are if the towns and parishes are going to work on this charter proposal with kirk Lees, so, so there was a, there was a um, years ago there was a, a charter drafted about the relationship between Kirklees and the towns and parishes, and my my personal interpretation of that was that before the ink was dry, Kirklees started ignoring it, but um, it would be worthwhile having that up and running. So some of the towns and parishes are trying to have a conversation with Kirklees about that. Um, uh, and, and my take on it would be it'd be good if Home Valley Parish is involved in that. Um, and this is the kind of thing that I would see them talking about a lot. Slightly. Thank you. I think Councillor Fay, anything else in the room? Oh, yeah, Councillor Greaves, am I led to believe that you fill the bins round Orley and Brockholes? Um, yes or no? Well, yes. Right. Um, where did the grit come from and who paid for it? Where did the grit come from and who paid for it? Yeah. I'm only acting on three people that's concerned about where it came from and who paid for it and did we pay for it. I said, no, Kirk, please pay for it. Kirk, please pay for it. Yeah, yeah. One just said that they saw you with a trailer full of grit uh, or you was given a trailer full of grit or whatever. No, I saw it all over myself, four foot four. I'm yeah. only passing these on by yeah, concern. No, no, so, where so, it came from, and who paid for it? Okay, so um, the the grit came from the depot. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, and uh, we, we, were, we were given the option of shoveling it up off of the floor before it washed away. Um, we bagged it up and we took it out. Um, we took it out to Homley uh, and Brockholes and to Meltham. Right, because I believe the bins at Meltham were filled with Council Bellamy. The council of that. Mm. They bought it themselves. Well, that's from Councillor Bellamy's mouth today to me on the phone. Okay. Well, what I would say is is that uh, whilst we were still filling the grit bins, they were all having a pint. But I mean, well, it's, it's not, not, not for me to get personal with the council of I'm just answering what people ask me to ask. But yeah, I, th I think there's maybe been an implication yeah. that, that some of the blue team had done all of the grit bins as opposed Please, to just the two. I'm not, I'm not sure of the relevance of this, this discussion to the parish council. But I think. Councillor Lyles and then I think Councillor Wilson want to speak. So. Uh, it's not about Rick Bins, Councillor Reeves. <laughs> Don't, um, whatever about it.
I'm hungry. So, the question about parking. Yeah. Um, I, I would, can you take, I'm just a bit concerned about the sands, you know, because it's a um, recreational area for children playing football on the weekend and yeah. people walk the dogs there. I've seen Trish there with the dog recently. And we're going to put all these orchardy things in, aren't we? And we want people to use that open space. And, and Moses Crooks put that nice walkway in and all them new facilities. Just a bit concerned about that. The parking charges will disencourage people to go to the sands. How do we work on that? Again, I'm not sure that this is an issue really for the Sands I, I, and the Parish Council. I, I, I think that when the consultation starts, that's the kind of issue to raise through yeah. that consultation. Right. Um, whether Parish Council is going to have a formal view on it set, itself, I, I, just, I don't know. I would, I would hope so. I'm not sure exactly what committee it would be that would do that. Um, but individually, there's, everybody can participate in that consultation. But my personal take on it is, is one size never fits all, so it rather depends upon what we're talking about and where and what those factors are. So, I, but, but you know, that's, a, that's supposed to be the purpose of consultation. Council Wilson? Just on the council bits. Can anyone go for anyone? No. No, no. No, no. No, that'd be mayhem, wouldn't it? Well, I'm just wondering if, if, what the arrangement was for getting it. It seems to have got people a bit hot under the collar as the fact that that we, we, that, that we fill some grit bins up. It yeah, seems strange that some people are allowed to fill a grit bin up and others. No, so no, just no, to be no, absolutely no, clear on it. I understand, there you go. Okay, <coughs> nobody, nobody went into the depot. There was an offload of grit. And we were told, take it or it's going to wash away. No, so it's we can't access it. Oh, okay, all right. I, I'm going. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. No, that's no, fine because I know, I know what the background is to all well, this. Who's may... we? Kirkley's councillors. Okay. Where the message? Who, who said the message and how far it got? I received the message. I didn't send it, so I received it. And as far as I know, everybody who asked the question got <coughs> told the answer. So I can only assume that some people never asked the question. Okay. Right. Can we leave that? Can we leave that there, please? So, Councillor Gibson and then Councillor Brook. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to mention about the first buses and the changes that they're making to the network. It's a bit disappointing that they have a consult with the parish council and just let us know what the changes are, but mm -hmm. it does, I do get the impression we don't know themselves where all the changes are. Mm -hmm. I did have a look at the, Charles is kind of sharing it across the community groups on Facebook. I've seen it before somewhere. I think, did you send it out, Jay? Someone just sent something out and I saw it on there. And the changes that I saw looked quite small, but it still should be consulting us. And uh, I don't know the full uh, length of it all. So, so some, of the, some of those bus changes will have a massive impact upon a few people. Right? So say if you live up in Oldfield, um, because of how to change the looping, mm -hmm. um, for most people, I don't think it'll have a massive effect. Mm -hmm. But the fact that at the bottom, they've just said, the timetable might change by five to 20 minutes. And um, most services will, the t that's the bit that's gonna affect everybody because it, your bus won't be coming at the time that you think it's coming, and they've not been able to confirm that. What's disappointing is, is they've been all over examiner about the extra services they're putting on for up to the hospital, yeah. but they've not <coughs> to mention what this is going to be, you know, what the impact of it is. The, the, the bit I'm struggling with is the fact that they can't release the timetable because it's not being confirmed, which seems that it, it starts in a fort, the fortnight. Um, I think we should contact Metro though, and let them know that we're. Well, I'm disappointed that they haven't. Well, it's not knows about it. It's, right. say, it's not Metro. It's first well, bus. Right, we've got Councillor Brook and then Councillor Bailey waiting to speak. And then I think that's what I think about moving on. Well, to thank uh, Councillor uh, Bruce for his uh, comments. Um, much appreciated uh, for your updates because he's probably the first Lord Councillor to speak at one of these events. So thank you, Mr. Osborne. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, ask that we note his comments. And then we move on beyond from there. Uh, I don't believe the grid bins are in the parish council's responsibility, that would be Kirkland's council. So I propose that we move on. Thank you. Thank you. I've just lost Bailey. Bailey needs to be just Yeah, I mean, it's just an observation that's, about that's the, I mean, in terms of first pass and consultation, we just know they're a law unto themselves. And, and they've demonstrated that with this 310 uh, pass mm. issue, and that's a head edge. I've written to them again last week about that. Um, I would expect West Yorkshire Metro to consult with us. 
uh, well, certainly with bodies generally locally, but we are the first class of the world. Yeah. I'm just going to come back to perhaps the big grit bin because um, <laughs> Councillor Glue has specifically asked, I think you specifically asked him whether the parish council might be interested in fitting in grit bin. I just want to get the, what the feeling of the meeting is about that or if, it, if as Councillor Brooke has just said that this is a, a courteous matter and, and we don't touch it. So, so how, how many, can I just ask how, how many uh, people think that we should be uh, paying into filling up the grid bins. Yeah. Okay. I, think well, I, I do think it's something that, that perhaps if we're going to part, be part of the, the council parishes discussion with the yeah. mm -hmm. charter, that those are the kind of issues that, that we would bring. That, that's probably the more important bit. I'm, I'm, I know Murfield, Fairburton, and Melton are talking, but I don't know where that leaves Denny Dale and, and Old Valley Parish Council. So. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Bruce. Yeah. And, and, and as Councillor Brooks said, you know, it's it's good to have a, some input from, from these councils as requested by the first committee. So thank you. Okay, let's move on to violence um, to be considered. Um, I don't know who's going to speak, but it's pretty self evident. Uh, is anybody going to speak to this? Does anybody wish to speak to this? The purpose of it. The purpose of this violence. Yeah. 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 Thank you. It's proposed formally. Second, seconded. All those in favour of this violence. Thank you. Okay, that's item 132. Um, item 133, violence to be considered. Uh, planning from the planning committee. I don't know if you wish to make an observation, Councillor Wilson. Or we just move on to the formal yeah. Right. Um, so, um, all those in favour of wish to approve this movement of money? First of all, the three thousand. First of all, the three thousand from the home fair market. Thank you. I think that's the majority. Um, and then, uh, secondly, um, the neighbourhood plan at the end of the year, money to be moved into EMR road safety. Uh, all those in favour of that? Thank you. Thank you. Um, right. Okay. Item uh, one, one, three, uh, one, three, four chairs. We thought one well, isn't going to take long because uh, since the last, since the last meeting, I haven't done anything for the parish council. <laughs> 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 Um, but I would just say, say in, in, in a sense, just going back to what Councillor Reid was saying, uh, that Councillor Colling and I have been trying desperately to set up a meeting with um, Mel with um, Melton Town Council, with the chair, the chair, with the chair and deputy there, uh, and we're continuing to do so. And eventually, we will get a time when our diaries actually do uh, do correspond. Um, so, so I, and I, you know, and I do agree that um, perhaps if we, if all five parish, five parish councils get together, we might have something of a voice. We'll see. We'll see. Thank you. So that's 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 it for me, really. So item one, three, five items for publicity. Any? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Well, and uh, we're going to have to. Um, make some sort of announcement on the page about the community um, awards. So that will have to be gently handled. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it will be handled with the measure. Yeah. Be sensitive. Is there anything else going on in any committees? Uh, 